Hello everyone and welcome all back to another video. It's me Sapio. Today we're going to be talking about the uh, uh, Franco-Provençal language and dialect group. Now, uh, I will be essentially going off of uh, a, a wiki page here where I'm kind of writing a script. I wrote a script actually, not just kind of. It's, it's a script I wrote and uh, uh, I'm just it's just a bunch of points that I have to go all over. And we're going to go over it and we're going to talk about the Franco-Provençal language and explain, like, what what is it? Oops. What is Franco-Provençal? Okay. Uh, now, Franco-Provençal can be referred to as Patois, Gaga, Savoyard, Arpitan, or Roman. Uh, or Roman. Roma. Roma. Uh, excuse me for any uh, pronunciation mistakes or apparent pronunciation mistakes. I am not a speaker of this language and... Well, personally, I'm not interested in studying it, but I am interested in its story, and we're going to get into it a bit here. Um, the uh, This uh, dialect group called Franco-Provençal refers to the entirety of the dialects, those being Vaudois, Jurassien, Lyonnais, Savoyard, Val d'Autin, Dauphinois, Fayetard, and Celis, or Celis, if you will. Uh, the dialect of Franco-Provençal is spoken in East Central France, Northwestern Italy, and Nor and Western Switzerland. Uh, it says also in the article uh, not to be confused with Pro. It, it is not to be confused with Provençal, uh, therefore Provençal, in uh, that being a dialect of Occitan. Even with all its distinct dialects counted together, the number of Franco-Provençal speakers has been declining significantly and steadily. According to UNESCO, Franco-Provençal was uh, already in 1995 a potentially endangered language in Italy and an endangered language in Switzerland and France. Uh, Ethnologue classifies it as nearly extinct. Formally, uh, spoken throughout duchy, the Duchy of Savoy, Franco-Provençal is nowadays spoken mainly in the Aosta Valley in Italy. Uh, it is uh, also spoken in the Alpine Valleys around Turin and two isolated towns, those being Faito and Celle di, di San Vito in Puglia. Franco-Provençal is also spoken in rural areas of French-speaking Switzerland. In France, it is one of the three Gallo-Romance language families of the country, uh, alongside uh, languages Doi and lang languages Doc, uh, or Langue Doi, Langue Doc, uh, of course. Uh, it and it uh, uh, is officially recognized as a regional language uh, of France, but it is uh, in the country, uh, it, its use in the country is marginal. Uh, still, uh, organizations are attempting to preserve it through cultural events, education, scholarly uh, research, and publishing. Uh, for classification, uh, Franco Provençal's name would suggest it is a bridge dialect or language between uh, French and uh, the uh, Provençal dialect of Occitan. Franco Provençal is a separate Gallo Romance family and that that transitions into the oil language languages Morvandiau, Morvandiau, and uh, Fran Franc Comtois. Uh, to the northwest into a romance, a romance, excuse me, into romance to the east, right? Okay, so Franc Comtois to the northwest, right? And the Morvandio, Mor excuse my pronunciation, and uh, uh, again uh, into the Gallo Italic Piemontese to the southeast, and finally into the Vivero Alpine dialect of Occitan to the southwest. For history, Franco Provençal emerged as a Gallo Romance variety of Latin. It, uh, linguist, it's the linguistic region comprom comprises east central France, western portions of Switzerland, the and the Oasta, Val, uh, Oasta 
valley of Italy with uh, the adjacent alpine valleys of the Piemont. This area covers territories once occupied by pre-Roman Celts, uh, including the Allobroges, Allobroges or Ges, Sequa, Sequani, Alaveti, Sotrones or Cautrones, and Salasi. By the 5th century, the region was controlled by the Burgundians. Um, Freder Frederico Krudvik uh, has also detected a Basque substrate in the toponyms of easternmost Val d'Autin dialect. Uh, Franco Provencal is first attested in manuscripts from the 12th century, possibly diverging from languages doi or langue doi, uh, as uh, early as the 8th and uh, 9th century BCE, BEC, excuse me, BEC, which, 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 what does, what the fuck does that refer to? I'm sorry for swearing, but like this article is like referring to BEC 19. 71 okay um yeah whatever okay moving on however franco provencal is consistently typified by a strict moapic me myopic excuse me myopic uh comparison to uh french uh, and it is characterized as conservative thus commentators like desormeaux consider medieval Consider medieval the terms for many nouns and verbs, including pata for a rag, baya, baya to give, uh, moussa to lie down. Uh, excuse my pronunciation again, I'm not a uh, Franco Provencal speaker. Okay, um, all of which are conservative only relative to French. Uh, as an example, Desormeaux writing on this point. Uh, in the for forward, forward, f o f o r e word, right? Forward of his Savoyard dialect dictionary states, the antiquated character of Savoyard patois is striking. One can one can note it in in not only in phonetics, in morphology and morphology but also in vocabulary where one finds numerous words and directions that clearly disappeared from French. Franco-Provençal failed to garner cultural prestige uh, of its three more wild, widely spoken neighbors, French, Occitan, and Italian. Communities where speakers uh, lived were generally mountainous and isolated from one another. The internal boundaries from entire speech areas were, were divided by wars and religious conflicts. France, Switzerland, and uh, the Franche Comté, protected by Habsburg Spain, Spain and the Duchy uh, later kingdom, uh, ruled by House Savoy, politically, politically divided the region. The strongest possibility for any dialect of Pro Franco Provencal to establish itself as, ma as a mi major dialect died in an edict dated 6th of January 1539 was confirmed in parliamentary in the excuse me in the parliament of Duchy of Savoy in, on 4th of March 1540 right just a bit after Duchy was the Duchy was part partially occupied by France since 1538, right? Just a bit before. The edict explain, explicitly replaced Latin and, by implication, any other language with French as the language of law and courts. Uh, the name Franco-Provençal is due to Graziadio As Asaio uh, Ascoli <laughs> in 1870. Eight, uh, chosen but because the dialect group was seen as an intermediate between French and Provençal. Uh, Franco-Provençal dialects uh, were widely spoken in their speech areas until the 20th century. As French political power 
expanded and the single national language doctrine was spread through French-only education, Franco-Provençal speakers abandoned their language, which had numerous sp spoken variations and no standard orthography in favor of culturally prestigious French. More on the origin of uh, of the name, Franco-Provençal is an extremely fragmented language with scores of highly peculiar language variation that never merged over time and the, the range uh, of dialect diversity is far greater than that found in Languedoc and Occitan regions. Com comprehension of, of one dialect by speakers of another is often difficult. Now, nowhere is it spoken in a pure form, and therefore, there uh, it is not, uh, you know, it is not a there is not a standard reference language that the modern generic label used to identify the, the language may indicate. So, uh, this explains why uh, the speakers use local terms to, uh, to name it such as Bressan, Bressan, uh, Forésien, for, for, for uh, Val d'Autun, Val d'Autun, Val d'Autun, yeah, that, uh, excuse me, the pronunciation, yeah, it's fine, uh, or simply Patois, or Patois. Uh, in, uh, only in recent years have speakers not not specialists in linguists become conscious of the language's collective identity. Whew, that's not bad, uh, but uh, continuing on, the language region was, uh, the language region was recognized in the 19th century during advances in research into nature and structure of human speech. Graziado as Aziaya. Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah Ascoli, a I'm sorry, I'm really garbage at pronunciation. A pioneer, a pioneer, a pioneering linguist, analyzed the unique phonetic and structural characteristics of numerous spoken dialects. In an article written in 1873, published later, uh, he. He offered a solution to existing disagreements about dialectal frontiers and proposed a new linguistic region. He placed it between languages doi group of languages franco and the uh, languages doc uh, group provençal to give uh, franco provençal its name. Ascoli described the language in these terms uh, in his defining essay on the subject. Fra I call Franco-Provençal a type of language that brings together uh, along with some, some characteristics which are its own characteristics partly in common with French and partly in common with Provençal and are not caused by any late confluence. Excuse me, my stomach is grumbling, but I'm trying to do this all in one take. You'll have to excuse me, but yeah. Uh, not caused by any late confluence and diverse, uh, of diverse elements, but on the contrary, attests to its own historical independence. Little different from, from those wh by which the uh, principal Neo-Latin Romance languages distinguish themselves from one another, right? So, that's quite good. Uh, also, although uh, the, uh, the name Franco-Provençal appears misleading, it continues to be used in scholarly journals for the sake of continu continuity. Suppression of the hyphen between the two parts of the language name French, uh, Franco-Provençal, uh, in French, excuse me, in French, it has, you know, been suppressed. Uh, the hyphen, they suppress in, in French the hyphen, was generally adopted following the conference at the, uh, uh, at a, following a conference at the University of Neuchâtel in 1969. However, most English journals continue to use the traditional spelling, that with the hyphen. 
and that with the hyphen being on probably the title and thumbnail of this video. Uh, now, uh, the name uh, Romand uh, has been used regionally in Switzerland since uh, uh, about since uh, 1494, and when uh, notaries of Fribourg were directed to write in their min write their minutes in both German and Roman or Romant, uh, it, it's it's or or it's spelled that way. I don't know why. It continues to appear in the names of of many switch swiss cultural organizations today the term roman is also used by some professional linguists uh, who feel that the uh, compound word franco provencal is inappropriate proposal in <coughs> A proposal in 19 in the 1960s to call the language Burgundian did not take hold mainly because the potential of confusion confusion with an uh, an oiled dialect a Languedoc dialect known as Burgundian itself uh, which uh, is spoken in a neighboring area which internationally uh, which is internationally known as Burgundy or Bourgogne in uh, in French uh, other areas uh, also had historical and political claims to such names, especially Moon in 2007. I'm not too sure what that refers to. Perhaps someone in the comments leaves a little. Uh, maybe one of you in particular. I think I know who you are. Maybe you know how to answer on this. Uh, if you do, take the time to then write a comment explaining what this is. I don't know what that citation refers to. But anyway, continuing on. Uh, some of the contemporary speakers and writers prefer the name Arpita uh, because it underscores the independence of the language and does not imply a union to any other established linguistic group. Arpita is derived from an indigenous word meaning alpine, yeah, arpita, alpine, or mountain highlands. It was popularized in the 1980s by movement Arpitania with an H, right? Uh, a political organization in we the Oeste Valley in the 1990s. Uh, excuse me, what am I saying? Uh, <laughs> Uh, this is getting long, but uh, yeah, I'm keep going here. In the 1990s, the term lost its lost its particular political context. The Alliance Culturelle Arpitana, or Arpitan, Arp Arpitan Cultural Alliance, is currently advancing the cause for the name Arpitan, uh, though through through the internet, uh, publishing efforts and uh, and other activities. Yes. Uh, the organization was founded in 2004 by Stéphanie Latian and uh, Alban Lavi in Lausanne, Switzerland, and is now based in, Fri in Fribourg. In 2010, SIL adopted the name Arpitan as the primary name of the language, as well as Franco-Provençal without a dash as uh, an additional name form. The language is called Patois or Patois Nostra Moda or, you know, our way of speaking by native speakers. Some Savoyard speakers call the language Sardes. Uh, this uh, is a colloquial term used because their ancestors were subjects of the Kingdom of Sardin Sardinia, uh, ruled by the House of uh, Savoy uh, until Savoy and Haute Savoy were annexed by France in 1860. The uh, language is called Gaga uh, in the Forez region of France and appears in titles and dictionaries and other regional publications. Gaga and the uh, adjective uh, Gagas uh, comes from the uh, local name uh, for residents of the... Uh, okay, comes from local name for the residents of Saint Etienne, popularized by Auguste Calet's story *La Légende des, Ga des Gaga*, published in 1866. 
Number of speakers. Now, this is the final point on the video. Uh, the Franco-Provencal dialect has a has with the greatest excuse me the Franco-Provencal dialect with the greatest population of daily speakers is Val uh, Approximately sixty-eight thousand people speak the language in the. Awasta Valley region of Italy, according to reports conducted in after a 2003 census. The Alpine valleys of the adjacent province of Turin have uh, an, uh, an estimated 22,000 speakers. The Fetar and Sigliaie, freaking hell, that's hard to pronounce, a dialect is spoken by just 1,400 speakers who live in an isolated pocket of the province of Foggia in southern it and the southern uh, Italian Apulia region. Uh, beginning in 1951, heavy immigration from the town of Celle di San Vito established a, the uh, Sic Sigliaie variety of this dialect in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, where at its at its peak. Uh, it was used daily by several hundred people. As of 2012, the commu this community has dwindled to fewer than 50 daily speakers across three generations. But for today, I believe this info piece is substantial enough. Uh, I uh, will go through. Uh, what was I? One of my sons. Ah, uh, I will go. Oh, what am my what is my script saying here? <sighs> okay, uh, sorry, I just cut there for a moment just to say that uh, in the future, if anyone wants me to make a video speaking more on grammar and linguistic uh, aspects of that, uh, yeah, just uh, leave a comment asking for that. But uh, well. Uh, yeah, I hope you found this uh, video and uh, yeah, I, f I hope you found this video to be informative and uh, well, I'm reading off of my script and it's been about 19 minutes. So if I'm making mistakes at this point, you have to understand I'm, I'm taking I'm doing this all in one big take. Uh, I normally don't do that, but we'll see how it turns out. Um, so, uh, yeah, I hope you found the video to be informative and that, uh, you can leave a like, comment, or subscribe if you found it to be worthy of that. Uh, or if you just simply liked it, then just leave a like. And if you're just passing by, then uh, that's not a problem. That's cool, too. Um, uh, what else? Uh, well, that's about it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um... Yeah, farewell guys, until next time.